Hey guys, thanks for watching. Today I'm going to make a video on 10 of my best purchases that I made over the last decade or so. Um, 10 of the best cards that I bought that have really been going up in value um, recently. As many of you know, the sports card market really took off last year in 2020 um, with COVID and people being stuck at home going through sports cards and I think maybe even the stimulus checks really fueled the, the card market. And a lot of these cards um, I'm going to show today have just continued to, to just boom um, the first few months of the year. So just wanted to, to show these off real quick. So anyways, let's go ahead and jump right in. I'm going to move these off to the side. Everybody's, I think, probably familiar with this first card that I'm going to show. Um, and as I go through these, I'm going to tell you what price I paid um, and then the approximate value today based on um, the kind of recent eBay sales. So first one here, 1989 Upper Deck King Griffey Jr. Rookie Card. Uh, this one's graded Beckett BGS 9.5 Gem Mint. Again, just such an iconic kind of classic card that uh, most people are familiar with, even people that are not sports cards collectors might be familiar with this one. Um, so this one I paid $134. Um, current value is right around, I think $2,000 or so. PSA 10s are I think going for 5,000 or more. So actually the Beckett 9.5s are, you know, less than half of what the PSA 10s are going for. Um, might be an opportunity to pick up some Beckett gems at kind of discounted rates. Um, and then I'll, along with this, I'll show screenshots. If I have my, um, my orders, in some, of the, in some cases I'm going to have uh, screenshots of the orders that I actually placed. Uh, maybe an email confirmation from eBay. If I can dig those up, I'll include those in this video as well. Okay, next card uh, is another Griffey card. And it is the 1989 Topps Traded Tiffany PSA 9 Mint. And if, you'll, if you guys are familiar, the Tiffany cards were very uh, limited production relative to the standard issue tops. So I think 89 tops traded, I'm just guessing, but I think there was around 10,000 copies of these made. So much fewer copies than, again, that uh, standard issue tops traded. I'll have to look that up. I'll include a note in the video. Uh, this Tiffany Griffey... I paid $75 and 21 cents. The last few sales on eBay have been in the $1,500 to $2,000 range. Next one is this 1987 Topps Jerry Rice. This is his second year card. Of course, 86 Topps was his rookie year. Um, this one another one that's just been really on fire um, over the last month and I think there's going to be a trend here a lot of the kind of the the goats the greats from each sport um, is where a lot of the new collectors and new investors are are headed towards are are kind of buying up a lot of demand for these sort of cards um, even second year not not just the rookies but Second year and even later years for some of these players. So anyways, the, the 87 Tops Jerry Rice, I actually got a steal on this one. Um, I paid $45.16. And the last few of those have sold for between $2,000 and $2,500. So that one's going nuts. Okay, next card is 1986 Topps Traded Tiffany Bo Jackson, graded PSA 9 Mint. Another Tiffany card. I'm a big fan of um, Topps Tiffany. I think these are some of the best investments that you can make from the junk wax era. 
because of the you know the limited print. Again, I think these ones may be around 5,000. Um, again, I'll have to double check that, but very, very limited print. Um, the Bo Jackson population is pretty low. I think there was some issues um, with condition. These are kind of a condition sensitive card. So um, PSA 9, I purchased this one for $42.99. The last few have sold in the range of $1,500 to $2,000. Another card from the Topps Tiffany set is this 1986 Topps Traded Tiffany Berry Bonds, PSA 10 Gem Mint. And this is, I think I got this one actually probably before even the Bo Jackson. Um, I'll have to look it up, but again, I think it was probably owned this one at least seven or eight years, if not longer. I actually bought this um, in a BGS 9.5 and sent it in for a crossover grade to PSA. I was very fortunate that this one crossed over. So this Barry Bonds, I paid, well, I originally paid um, about 200 bucks for the BGS 9.5. And then with crossover grading costs, I have my current uh, cost at $223 for this card. Last few sales on eBay have been between $10,000 and $12,000 range. Hoping he makes it into the Hall of Fame because that one will probably just continue to go up. But... I think it's looking dicey. I think he maybe has one more year on the ballot before he goes off the, uh, kind of moves on to that secondary ballot. I forget what that's called, but we'll see. Him and Roger Clemens got one more year. Okay, uh, next card is, speaking of Hall of Famers, the uh, first round Hall of Famer. First ballot Hall of Famer, Derek Jeter. And this is his 1993 Topps Gold rookie card, graded PSA 9 Mint. This one has been on fire. Um, Jeter cards were another one, kind of the greatest, the GOATs. Um, a lot of people, I think, were seeking out Derek Jeter rookie cards. A lot of his cards have gone up recently. They kind of cooled off or maybe leveled out a little bit over the past few weeks or the past month. But um, this one definitely has gone up a lot since I bought it. Um, I think I got this maybe three, four years ago. And I paid $38.16 for this one. Last few sales on eBay have been in the range of five to $600. Okay, we got four more to go. Next one is a more recent pickup. I think I got this in the last two years. This is a 1980 Topps Scoring Leaders featuring Larry Bird and Magic Johnson rookie cards along with Julius Irvin. And this card, this is another one of those kind of classic basketball cards. I think it's one of the most kind of iconic basketball cards out there featuring rookies from Magic and and Larry Bird. Um, PSA 9, sorry, PSA 7 near mint. Wish it was a 9. Pick this one at, uh, pick this card up at a very good time. Um, let's see, looks like my purchase price was $353. So very good price. Even at that time, it was a good price. I think these were averaging around 500 to 600. So I got a I got a steal even at uh, at that time to pick this up for 353. This is another one that's been going absolutely insane over the past year and especially over the past 2 to 3 months. Last uh, comps that I found on eBay were going for around 4000 to 5000 dollars on this one. 
interesting to look back at this video and see where this card's at in like maybe two, three, five years from now. Okay, a few more basketball cards here to round it off. Next one is, speaking of iconic basketball cards, I think everybody is familiar with this one. Um, 1986 Fleer Michael Jordan rookie card. Created PSA 8, Ear Mint Mint. And this is Michael Jordan's only rookie card, aside from his uh, sticker that came in the, in the, in the same uh, 1986 Fleer set. This is another one. Uh, Jordan cards have been <laughs> skyrocketing like crazy. I think uh, there was a few PSA 10s that sold, I believe earlier this month, were around, I think around 750,000 they sold for. Um, so anyways, this PSA 8 has, has gone up quite a bit um, recently. I think current prices are kind of a wide range on these, I think collectors and investors, you know, people that are buying this card really scrutinize things like centering and, you know, not all PSA 8s are created equal. So the range I found was around 20 to $30,000 was the range. I bought this one, I believe it was in 2019. And at that time I was kind of kicking myself because I had seen it many years back, around $800 per card, and I didn't pull the trigger when this was at $800. But I finally pulled the trigger back in 2019, and I paid $2,308. Very happy I, I picked that up when I did. Again, another one I'd really be curious to look back at this video and see where this card is at in 5, 10 years from now. And speaking of Michael Jordan, I also picked up his 1986 Fleer sticker from the same set. Uh, this one's also graded PSA 8, Near Mint Mint. I got this one last year. I think maybe this was the only card that I bought last year of this top 10 list. And it was going up at the time that I bought it. It had been, I think, just a few hundred bucks or so. Um, and, you know, maybe back in 2019. And then I picked it up last year um, for $670.50. Current price on these is in a nine to $10,000 range. You know, it makes me think a lot of these cards I picked up as an investment. Um, I was very kind of strategic in some of these purchases told myself I was going to invest in sports cards. And now that some of these have gone up a thousand, two thousand percent or more, I'm now wondering, <laughs> do I sell? You know, I like these cards. I like to have them also as a, you know, as a collector. These are some of the cards I always wanted when I was a kid. So I have to be honest with myself though. Is this, is this an investment or is this uh, more for a, a collection and a hobby? kind of leaning towards the collection and hobby. Maybe one day I can pass these down to my kids um, or I could sell them right now and put put the money towards their college fund. But I don't think I'm going to be doing that anytime soon. It's just too fun having these in my collection. Okay, last card is a little bit uh, of an oddball compared to these cards here. I think, as you can see, all these cards are essentially from the junk wax era, maybe with the exception of the 1980 that was before the junk wax era. But, um, you know, this is the, the era that I grew up in collecting cards when I was a kid. So as I got older and I had some money to spend, I, I started picking up a lot of the cards that I wanted to own as a kid, but just for whatever reason, couldn't afford them or, or couldn't find them. Um, so anyways, this last card, number 10, is, does not fit into um, that description, but um, is another card that's just been... Super on fire um, over the last couple years. And that is this 2007 Kevin Durant rookie card. Uh, he had several rookie cards from this 2007 set. I think there's an orange one and a white one. I think there's even a, a variation um, 
kind of like a throwback variation. This is one of the more um, desirable ones. The black is pretty condition sensitive. Um, and last few of these have been selling in the range of $1,000 to $1,200. And I picked this one up, I think two years ago. I'm a Warriors fan, so that's why I picked up this Kevin Durant. Um, of course, he's not on the Warriors anymore, but uh, became a big fan of him when he helped us win those championships. And I remember when I bought this, it had just been listed for, I think, 10, 15 minutes on eBay. I sorted by new, newly listed items with a buy it now and um, was fortunate enough to even put an offer in. This was a buy it now. I think it was like 50 bucks buy it now, but I put in an offer for $30 and... The, buy, uh, the seller accepted my offer. So my after-tax price that I have listed here was $31.26. $31. This card was going for less than two years ago. Now it's over 1000 Is that insane or what? Anyways, um, that's all for my top 10 list. Um, I could do more, but this video would get very long um, if I continue to go through some of the more um, more of the cards that I picked up. You know, I'll just show you this bonus card because I had it off to the side. Uh, bonus card number 11, Jerry Rice, 1986 tops. PSA 9 Mint, this is a rookie card. I got this one, I think it was around 400 bucks, and these are like a... I think 5,000 bucks now. Just crazy. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Uh, please leave a comment. Tell me what you think. Do you think these cards still have potential to rise? These, If you were investing in these cards, would you sell now? I don't know. Is there a bubble? Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and look up for more videos. Have a great rest of your day.